Okay, in this question, I've got a sample of, uh, they are weights of jars of jam, I think. Um, and we've got a sample. And uh, we know that the uh, distribution is normal. That's uh, important. And we know the standard deviation of the population. So what we've got to do is set up a confidence interval. So the recipe for confidence interval is um, the... Uh, mean of the sample x bar plus or minus a z value times the standard error where the standard error is sigma over root n so i need to know an x bar a z a sigma and a root n and an n so uh the easy ones are a sigma is the uh, standard deviation of the population so that is seven okay um the uh, n is the size of the sample so how many items in the sample there are eight so n is eight so that's very easy X bar. Well, I haven't got an X bar, but I have got the weights of the um, sample, so I can work out X bar by actually um, adding them together and dividing by 8. Or I can go into one variable statistics mode on my calculator and type in my 8 weights here. There they go. They're in. So if I go into one of our calculations, um, put on that right, if I go into one of our calculations then, my x value, it says there, is 465. My x bar, I should say. So x bar equals 465 from the calculator. So the last thing I need is a z value. And I'm only entitled to use a z value if I'm dealing with a normal distribution. But that's okay because the population was normally distributed. So sample means will be as well, even though this sample isn't particularly large. So... Um, what is my z value? Well, for this, I need to think about the given percentage. And the given percentage is 95%. So I've got 95% in the center. So that means I've got 2.5% hanging off each end. So how do I get the z value for this? Well, I need to think about this diagram. Okay, 95% uh, plus 2.5% uh, is 0 0.975, and my inverse normal can help with that. So on the calculator, if I go into inverse normal, and my area, what we said was 0 0.975, so we get a z value of 1.960. So z equals 1.960. So now all I have to do is do x bar plus or minus z times the standard error. So that's going to be uh, x bar is 465 plus or minus 1.96 times sigma, which is 7, over the square root of n, which is the square root of 8. So on my calculator, if I go into normal mode, I want 4, 6, 5. And for the lower lim limit, I'm going to do minus 1.96 times 7 over the square root of 8. And that gives me uh, 4, 6, 0, 0. 0.1. Uh, does it give me a particular limits no it doesn't give me a degree of accuracy to go for i'm happy with that and then for the other one i need to add on instead of taking away so i can change that to a plus and i get um four six nine point eight five so that's four six nine point nine so my confidence interval i'm going to round to three significant figures at this point now in part b there's a claim that the jars can a claim to contain 454 grams of jam this kind of only makes sense if they're talking about at least 454 grams of jam now this claim and often you have to take it this way you have to think consider two things do they mean uh that all jars in the sample, all, all jars in the population have at least uh, this weight of jam in them. And for that one, even looking at the sample data, okay, we'll see that um, there are some that are really quite close to that limit, okay. And um, there's no particular reason that if I'm seeing a 455 four, five, five, and a 457 and a 458, that all of them are going to be. Um, greater than 454. So it is unlikely that all jars contain at least 454 grams of jam. So that's individual jars. But if I look at my confidence interval, I'm pretty sure, I'm 95% confident that the mean weight of jam is between 460 and 470. So I've got to say both things. Okay, firstly, individual jars 
individual jars may well contain less than 454 grams, but it is likely the mean um, weight is more than 454 grams. Okay, so always, uh, I mean, read the question carefully, but if in doubt, comment both on individual jars and what you think the mean of uh, a sample might be, or what well, the population mean might be. Okay, and then part C. Now, part C, I'm afraid this doesn't make any sense as it's expressed at the moment. What proportion of these samples, well, there is any one sample given, would you expect not to contain the population mean? I think this question is trying to say, um, for many samples, if many samples were taken and a confidence interval were calculated each time, what proportion of the time would we expect the population, uh, the, the, the confidence interval not to contain the population mean? And if that's what the question means, how often would we expect the confidence interval we've got to actually not succeed in capturing the mean? Because it's a 95% confidence interval, I think it's probably intending us to say that 5% of the time, in other words, 0.05 of the time, uh, our confidence interval from a given sample would not actually contain the population mean.